I wonder if they're going to take the field at 7.05. <laughs> they're not out here yet. Six minutes on the clock. Six and a half on the clock. Oh, that's good. They set the clock. Good for them. Yeah, and they even announced it. I mean, the referees know 7.05, so they want to get it going. Yeah. We can do starting lineups, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, that's fine. We have plenty of material to fill pregame. I forgot Ada has 19 state championships. So I said last week, Carl Albert, 17. They were probably the second most behind Jinx. Ada has 19. 19, yeah. John Higby, Clinton coach, told me. Huh? to Ortho Central's Friday Night Rivals, live on CW34, driven by GMC. Another beautiful Friday night in Oklahoma City for week two of the high school football season. A good one on tap tonight as Class 3A's number two team, the Heritage Hall Chargers, play host to the defending state champs in Class 4A, the Clinton Red Tornadoes. Hi, everyone. Jack Damrell with Myron Patton. Ed Murray with you on Friday Night Rivals. Another beautiful night. An intriguing matchup tonight. The Clinton Red Tornadoes come in 17 state titles under their belt, Myron, but they only have four returning starters. Could play a factor tonight. Yeah, it could. And, of course, they're coming off a, a disappointing loss. They lost to Bishop McGinnis last week. And, of course, they're a prideful program. You mentioned the defending state champions in Class 4A. Talk to some folks out there. They want to make good. Not a better team to get that respect back and beat a team like Heritage Hall. It'd be a big win tonight uh, for Clinton coming off the loss last week to McGinnis. Uh, meanwhile, the Heritage Hall Chargers come in without their starting running back, who's suspended for tonight. But Ad, uh, Andy Bass, the uh, quarterback, really a playmaker. Yeah, he really is. And, of course, Brett Bogert, they've always got playmakers here. They always come up to replace guys. They're coming off the win over Millwood. They're another team that's got talent. They'll be in the hunt for the state championship. This will be a really, really good win. You beat a 4A state champion, Doug Clinton. All right, we'll have the opening kickoff and the lineups coming up right after this. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Ed, we're coming to you after the break. Okay, after the break, there it comes to me. So, sun in my face. Yeah. <laughs> TV stuff. Sun in the face. Clinton will hit in the fitness south. Heritage Hall is coming out. And here comes Clark.
Welcome back, everyone, to Heritage Hall High School in Oklahoma City. What a gorgeous night for football as the teams make their way out onto the field. Let's go downstairs and say hello to Ed Murray. Ed. Well, Jack, it is a beautiful night. The wind coming across the field from the east to the west, far to near side, shouldn't be much of a factor. I talked to both coaches about how do you get a marquee matchup like this in week two? Why would a 17-time state champion schedule at McGinnis at Heritage Hall? Why would Heritage Hall schedule a 17-time state champion? Simple answer from both. Nobody wants to come to our place and play us because we're perennial powers. So we're going to play each other and play each other they will tonight. And for Heritage Hall, they're moving districts, Jack, and from a pass-happy district to one that smash mouth run the ball and no team will play smash mouth football quite like the clinton red tornadoes ought to be a great matchup thank you ed and yes exactly when you switch districts now they could get lincoln christian uh, myron in the finals not the semifinals as they have the last three years and lost to lincoln christian all three years keys to the game myron tonight uh, for both clubs for clinton obviously they need to prevent turnovers which they had last week yeah, that was a big uh, problem, uh, losing that first ball game. So it limit those, especially when you're on the road against a very good opponent. And then, of course, uh, the quarterback play is also important. Your signal caller's got to make plays. And, of course, that's limiting turnovers as well. And for Heritage Hall, they're with the new interim coach, uh, Brett Bogart, the head coach of Heritage Hall, suspended tonight. Yeah, so uh, the pressure's on your interim coach to make all the right decisions from that standpoint. That'll be something you're worth watching. It's, he's stepping to the big chair. Uh, everybody's watching that. Our starting, uh, we'll get to our starting lineups in just a moment, and we are ready for kickoff on this week two of the high school football season. It is time for the Ortho Central kickoff. Ortho Central, we are part of your team. And here is Jordan Brown for the Red Tornadoes getting us underway, and it's a beautiful kick into the end zone and actually goes out of the back of the end zone. And the big left tackle for Clinton has a big le- uh, foot, and so it'll be a touchback, and the Chargers will start first down and 10, and here is their starting lineups. Tonight's starting lineups brought to you by the United States Coast Guard. United States Coast Guard always ready. There you see Andy Bass, the quarterback. He's a playmaker. In the backfield, Cooper Cookson. He will be, actually, it'll be Barrett Travis who will start at the running back for Heritage Hall. There you see uh, the offensive lineman and the wideouts look for River Faulkner, also uh, not playing tonight, suspended again week two. Uh, so River Faulkner and the head coach Brett Bogert will talk more, not able to play tonight. Here is the handoff for char- the Chargers and immediately taken down to the backfield for a huge loss on the play. And so to be second down and long, the ball carrier was Rashad Smith. And it's a loss of about five yards, second down 15 now to start for Heritage Hall. Boy, he broke through that line and uh, got in the backfield. And that's a great way to start for your Clinton on the road to put your home team there in second long situation. There you saw the Coast Guard starting lineups for the Red Tornadoes. And here's a handoff running left. And this is Bladen Vogel, the junior running back for the Chargers. And he's going to lose a couple more yards. So two plays for the Chargers and two losses. It is now third down and long for Heritage Hall to start the game. You know, this is uh, kind of a rough start here for Heritage Hall. We'll see if they can uh, get out of this. If nothing else, get better punting position. Andy Bass, number seven, the starting quarterback. Junior signal caller, six foot, 190 pounds, 95 pounds. He will look to pass it, throws it down the right side, and it is caught for a first down across the 30 to the 33 yard line. His receiver making the catch was Liam Burton, and it's a first down for the Chargers. An Oklahoma four dealers first down, the first of the game. I was out here the other day and watched these plays. Nine on the interception, and here it is again, Myron threw it right to him. Yeah, just under through. He stepped up in front of it and got the pick. And suddenly Heritage Hall's in good field position on Clinton's side of the field. Lost the ball at the end of the play, but it was fumbled out of bounds. And so Heritage Hall will keep it. They're going to move it up to the 43-yard line. So Heritage Hall takes over at the Clinton 43. First down and 10. Midway through the first quarter no score here's the handoff right back up the middle this is bear travis a sophomore running back for the chargers on the carry gets a yard he had the majority of carries last week in the win against millwood 35 28 but really different story from this week to last week for the chargers uh, myron they played on thursday night 
not very good conditions. It had rain prior mm -hmm. to the game. The field was very muddy. Really caused some havoc between both clubs. Yeah, the fact they would put up those points uh, in such bad conditions. And really, they haven't done a whole lot here offensively early. There's a backwards pitch to uh, from Bass out to Liam Burton. That was a dangerous play. And he's going to not get back to the line of scrimmage, lose about three yards. Actually, a loss of two, so it's going to be third down and a long 10, maybe 10 and a half to go for the Chargers at the Clinton 44-yard line. Liam Burton does a little bit of everything, plays both ways, offense, defense. Defense is kind of like linebacker, safety, where they need to put him. But uh, also does a good job offensively. Here's a pass by Bass, and he overthrows his wide-open receiver, Jordan Harris, down the left sideline, and it will be four down. And let's see if Heritage Hall wants to go for it or whether Bass will try the quick kick again and try to pin Clinton deep. I think they're going to pin him deep. Looks like they're going to kick it away this yeah. time. Not a bad call. See if you can pin him deep, get better field position, make another crack at it. Plus, you haven't exactly moved it on your last three downs. Exactly. Here's Bass's kick high up into the air, and it will be fair caught at the 15-yard line by the Red Tornadoes, and that is where they will take over. 5.33 to play in the first quarter. No score from Heritage Hall. A beautiful night for football. We'll take a break. Come back with us on Friday Night Rivals right after this. Back at Heritage Hall, Clinton takes over. First down and 10 from their own 15-yard line. And here is Cooper Soley in the backfield. Trey Bennett, the fullback. And the handoff goes to the fullback. And he barrels his way for about two yards. It'll bring up second down and eight for the Red Tornadoes, who threw an interception on their first offensive possession of the game. So let's see what they can do here deep in their own territory. Last week. Turned the ball over a couple times two, deep in their own territory. They would like to not do that this time after their first possession. Right? Yeah, uh, especially with your defense doing a pretty good job limiting Heritage Hall's offense in the first couple possessions. You don't want to give them anything. Had a couple of good running plays on that first possession. Clinton did to see if they can get that going again. Lone running back behind Soli takes the pitch to the right side and gets a couple more yards and on the carry this time is Darren Hester, a freshman, 5'5", 143. They think a lot of, uh, they think a lot for Darren Hester, only a freshman. They expect a lot out of him, sh I should say, over the next several years. It looked like he had a little wiggle to him there, young guy. But uh, the fact he's out there as a freshman, yeah, tells you something. I mean, in this early deep in your own territory, but he's got some big play potential to him. They could use one. Third down six now for the Red Tornadoes. Soli will take it himself right back up the middle. He's going to lose two yards, and he is swarmed under by a host of Chargers. Charlie Ganiabadi making the stop for Heritage Hall, and it'll bring up fourth down for the Red Tornadoes. Yeah, that looked like a design quarterback draw. And uh, just wasn't anything there. And both defenses kind of settling in, limiting the offenses to both sides. Here, Charles should get pretty good field position here, though. 
Here's Jordan Brown to kick it away for the for the uh, Red Tornadoes, and what a spiraling, beautiful kick. This is one of the best punts I've seen in high school football in a long time, and it's going to be down at the 11-yard line. And let's talk about Jordan Brown for just a moment. He's a he's an offensive lineman, 5'11", 203 pounds, but there's a reason he, I think he can kick the football that well, Myron. Well, I'll tell you what, that's in a game like this, and it's early, but that could be the difference. I mean, he's showing on his kickoff. And then there on the punt, the kicking game could play a role who's going to win this game. And so he's had the two biggest plays so far. I mean, what looked like you would thought they would have the ball maybe the 50-yard line or maybe better with a return. Now they have flipped the position and flipped the field, and they have a chance to pin here at all deep and get better field position Clinton. So that the kicking game is going to be big for Clinton in this contest. And here is the first play, and it is almost intercepted, but there is a flag down offsides on Clinton. I was going to finish my story about Jordan Brown. He is the star goalkeeper on the soccer team for the Red Tornadoes. Won a state championship last year for Clinton as the starting goalkeeper, so he's used to punting a ball. There you go. He did a great job there. Yeah. Now, if the head tall coach is a telling his return guy, you can't let that ball bounce. you got to catch it. you got to catch it, yes. you got to catch it. If you catch it, you're still going to get the ball around the 40. Instead, it rolled them 20 yards, and you're deep on territory. Chargers pick up five yards on the penalty against Clinton. First down and five. Here is Bass to pass it left side, and he has a receiver open at the 35-yard line, still on his feet across the 40, and he fumbles the football, but I believe Clinton has recovered. They act like they got it. Rashad Smith on the reception and then the fumble. Darren Hester, the freshman on the recovery for Clinton after it looked like the Chargers were going to pick it up. Let's look at it again as we head to break. No score from Heritage Hall. Heritage Hall. Three minutes left to go, opening quarter. Welcome back to Her Her Heritage Hall. Jack Dameron, Myron Patton, Ed Murray with you on Friday Night Rivals and our entire broadcast team on a beautiful night. Beautiful vantage point for Myron and I up here next to the press box, Myron. Outdoors, man. <laughs> here is the first play from scrimmage. Soli throws it up for grabs, and now a flag thrown late. By the referee, was this pass interference on Jordan Harris for the Chargers as Soley was looking for Jeremiah Barker, and it is pass interference against Heritage Hall. Let's take a look again. Yeah, he's trying to say he got a little, little chicken fighting there. I don't know. Maybe left hand on the shoulder pad. Yeah. May have gotten. That ref is through the flag. He's about 15 yards away. That's a pretty good arm. Yeah. I mean, accuracy. <laughs> So the penalty gives the Red Tornadoes a first down. It is an Oklahoma four dealers first down for the Red Tornadoes. And here is Soli under center. He will keep it himself. Runs the option around the right side. He's got the pitch out. And across the 20. Down into the red zone to the 17-yard line. Goes Jeremiah Barker. And it will be second down and about four for the Red Tornadoes. 
And they're inside the Rose State red zone. Scoring opportunity for Clinton and maybe one of those games where you got to take advantage of this. The way the game has started anyway with uh, defenses kind of controlling things, turnovers. Pirasoli, quick pass out to the right side, has it complete. And may have picked up a yard is Jeremiah Barker. It'll bring up third down and short for the Red Tornadoes. They are one and one on the season after opening in week zero with a win against Kingfisher and then lost last week against McGinnis, 46 to 14. So they would like a good start here. On the turnover, they have third down and three at the 16 yard line. High formation for Clinton. Here's a keeper back up the middle solely, and he gets a first down across the 10, tripped up at the seven yard line. It is a first down for Clinton. Just kind of followed the man in the hole. Good block there up front. Tackle made by Liam Burton. For well, the Chargers. A little bit later on. Yep. So first down and goal. Ball spotted at the eight-yard line for Clinton. Threatening here first with under 90 seconds to play in the opening quarter. Soli will pitch it. Running right. Near the five-yard line goes Garrison Rhodes. It'll bring up second down and goal. Let's see where they spot it. It'll be spotted at the five-yard line. Not a lot there that time. So you think he punched this in? Or? Garrison Rhodes, a junior running back, six foot 170. Tailback behind Trey Bennett on this second down and play for Clinton from the right side. Here is Soli on the keeper again. Close to the goal line. Did he fumble the football? More guys diving in like people, something. Yep, a lot of people diving in. Let's see who comes up with it. He was right at the goal line, and they're going to say Clinton got in. Touchdown, Red Tornadoes. And I believe the football was recovered by DeAndre Fancher, number two. Possibly, or maybe Trey Bennett. We'll see. Let's see. Yeah, same play they ran a second ago. Quarterback just falling there. He did. Yeah, he fumbled. And it's Johnny on the spot right there. Right place, right time. Well, there is Trey Bennett. He fell on it also, and so was Pantra there. And here's the kick, the point after, and it is good. And so they add the point after with 22 seconds to go in the opening quarter. And the Red Tornadoes take a 7 0 lead. They get points off of the Heritage Hall turnover. Well, and those are things that uh, you got to stay away from. That was a big play the Heritage Hall was making, but we had both teams kind of put the ball on the, on the on the turf here in the first quarter. They're going to give the fumble recovery to that guy right there, number 15, Trey Bennett, picks up another touchdown senior, 5'11", 194 pounds. One of their top turn, uh, returners from a year ago, and this is a team that has only four returning offensive starters from that state championship team. 17 of them, I should say. Two weeks in a row, Myron, we do two teams who've won. Yeah, a lot of tradition a winning. Lot of, yeah, a lot of state championships. Heritage Hall, of course, has seven of their own, so they're yeah. used to it as well. Yeah, let's see older relatives. Brothers or dads, in some cases, probably out here said uh, about their state championship run. So, got a lot to live up to. It's time for another Ortho Central kickoff. Ortho Central, we are part of your team, and here is Jordan Brown teeing it up for the Red Tornadoes. And this one's going to be on the line drive taken by the Chargers at the 10 yard line. Running right and tackled at the 30-yard line on the return for the Chargers is Jordan Harris, junior wide receiver. And so Heritage Hall will have it again. 16 seconds remaining in the opening quarter. Well, let's see what they can do. Um, on the positive side, they, they were may have had a drive going there. Now you got to hang on to the football. There you get a good look at Andy Bass being looked at by several schools after his 
high school season is over, but he still has another year to come back. He's only a junior. Here's the handoff. Right back up the middle. Good yardage on first down out to the 40-yard line. Travis. Is Barrett Travis, a sophomore running back, and that will end the first quarter of play after the eight-yard run on first down. So that'll do it. Quarter number one is in the books from Heritage Hall. A couple of turnovers, one by each school. The Red Tornadoes take advantage of their turnover, and they lead it here 7-0. Come back for the second quarter on Friday Night Rivals right after this. Welcome back for the start of the second quarter from Heritage Hall. The Red Tornadoes lead 7-0. Here's the second down and one play for the Chargers. A dangerous pitch, but he gets it out to Burton, and Burton's going to get a first down by about a, an inch. Dangerous play, but they got it. Let's go downstairs to Ed Murray. Ed. Yeah, guys, running back uh, Bladen Vogel, number six, also plays linebacker. He's got an injury to his shin on his left leg. He tried to walk it off, but he shook his head no to the trainers. He's now taking the shoe off. So Heritage Hall does not have their running back, Vogel, for the time being. All right, first down for the Chargers. Ball spotted at the 43. Just started the second quarter from Heritage Hall High School. Here is Bass back to pass, looking long right side. And he throws it incomplete. He was looking for Burton again, but he was double covered in the secondary. It'll bring up second down and 10 now for the Hall. Burton's kind of like mentioned earlier, kind of a do-it-all kind of guy. Uh, with the running back being out, they maybe look for him. I mean, he caught that pitch, was a, which was about, about a four-yard pitch. Uh, almost out in front. He got the first down there. Of course, he plays on defense as well. I said linebacker safety, kind of wherever they need him, so... Maybe they try to lean on him a little bit more here on the offensive side of things as well. Two-year starter for the Chargers. Last year had 19 receptions for 350 yards. Here's the second down play for the Chargers. Quick pass by Bass. He has it complete to Burton, who's trying to get away. May have got the first down awfully close, but tackled in the secondary by Nicholas O'Neill. So one scholar athlete to another right there, Myron. Maybe they're talking about grade point average. They're both smarter than I am. Both nearly <laughs> four point grade point averages. But uh, yeah, there's O'Neal. Got a leg, not letting go. He's a soccer player as well as a football player. So 
Now we'll hear from both those guys at halftime. So third down and short for Heritage Hall from the Clinton 48-yard line. Bass dropping back to pass, now rolling right, lost it down the field, and it's in and out of the hands, but a flag comes in late. He was looking for Rashad Smith. They're going to get a pass interference against the Red Tornadoes. It'll bring up a Heritage Hall first down thanks to the pass interference. Yeah, I'm not quite sure he looked back for the ball, that whole thing they get you if you're not looking back for the football. I believe they got Jeremiah Barker on the, nope, that's not uh, Barker. That is uh, Contavion Hill. Yeah, he wasn't looking back. Sophomore cornerback for the Red Tornadoes. And that's going to give the Chargers good field position all the way down to the Clinton 33-yard line. Ten and a half to play, second quarter. Chargers looking to tie it up. Clinton has not beaten Heritage Hall since 2013. And here's the handoff and tackled for about a yard loss is Barrett Travis. So it'll bring up second down and let's call it 11 for Heritage Hall. The last Clinton victory against the Chargers, like I said, back in 2013. Man, that's, uh, that's a while ago. Eight straight for Heritage Hall over Clinton. And all within that time, they've won, let me see, one, two, three, four, five state championships between the two. Here is Bass on the keeper. Right back up the middle. We'll get down close to the 30-yard line. And is the ball loose again? No, not yeah, this time. It looked like it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's talk about all the state championships that uh, these clubs, these two teams have won. Myron, look at that for Clinton. Started back in 1965. Last year's state championship in 2021 ended a drought of almost a decade. So they don't go a decade too often without a state championship. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty impressive. And First wishbone team at Oklahoma, they had a guy named Roy Bell that's on that team. Some Clinton. On third down, Bass has a receiver open. Did he catch it? No, he didn't. Could not catch it at the goal line. That is Jordan Harris, the intended receiver. Nice coverage that time by Jeremiah Barker. It'll bring up four down, just off the fingertips of Harris. Yeah, he's open a little bit early. If he got it to him a little bit earlier, he'd have walked into the end zone. But he had both uh, corner and safety beat. Ball to ride a little late. A lot of the second get over there, knock it down, at least get in the way. They're going to go for it on fourth down from the Clinton 30-yard line. They need six yards. They need to get to just past the 25-yard line. Bass dropping back to pass, looking right, throws it short, has the receiver open. Did he get the first down? This is going to be awfully oh, close. close. This may have been a great first down saving tackle by Zayden Collins, like the middle linebacker for Clinton, and I believe he is short, and it will turn the ball over to the Red Tornadoes. A little crossing pad. Looked like he might get it, but he tripped him up right there. Just short of the first yeah. down. Yeah. Yeah. So they will give the ball back over to Clinton with 8.56 to play in the second quarter. There you get a good look at big number three, their middle linebacker, only a sophomore, 5'10", 195. A lot of sophomores on this Clinton team. Again, they lost it a lot from last year's state title team, but that does not mean that they won't contend this year. They contend, it seems like, every year in Class 4A. Yeah, I'm trying to roll back my memory. You said the 2013 last time they won, who would have been on the team? Here is the handoff back up the middle. And gains a couple yards. Let's go downstairs to Ed Murray. Ed, what do you have for us? Well, Jack, you guys were talking about state championships. With that win last year, Clinton became the first team in state history to win a state title in seven straight decades. And what's interesting about both these teams, Clinton has won four at Class A, 1-2A, 3-3A, and 4-4A. Heritage Hall has won four at 3A, two at 2A, and one at 4A. They pass it around no matter what class they're in. Wow. They say everybody can get some. Here's the second down play. Soli lobs the pass way out of bounds. Not sure where that one was going. And it'll be third down. There seems like there might be a flag on the play. Let's see. 
Here's what we have. And here is our referee, Brad Friesian. And it is a chop, chop block. block on the Red Tornadoes. Let's watch it. That's where you engage right, right there. Right there, yep. Yeah. Yep. Number 63, Kong Reeves. Senior left guard, 5'5", 170 on the chop block. Kong Reeves. I think the quarterback was just passing out a souvenir of somebody who wanted football. <laughs> a little bit high on that one. There you get a good look at the offensive line for Clinton. Not very big. 5'5", 5'11", is Jordan Brown, the biggest offensive lineman. Matthew Wynn, the center, 5'6". Right guard, Layden Fuller, 5'7", and then Riley James, the right tackle. He's, he's the biggest one of them all, 6'2". So they marked it off. They marked it wrong, so they will remark it, and it's now second down and long. Closed captioning for tonight's game is brought to you by the wonderful group at High Five Media. High Five Media intentionally different. 8-12 to play, second quarter. 7-0 Red Tornadoes out in front. Here is Soli. Looking right side, throws it up into the air, and it is caught at the 35-yard line, breaking loose at the 40, across to the 45 to the 47. Goes his receiver, Jeremiah Barker. Great second effort by Barker to get all the way out to the 47-yard line. And it wasn't so much he was open. He just went and got the ball. This is called give your receiver a chance to make a play, and he went and got it. Breaks a tackle. Looked like he might break another one. He does. And that's a huge play to uh, give them a fresh set of downs. And they need some playmakers like that to uh, keep this drive going, perhaps put another score on the board. That's a Brahms first down after the 34-yard reception. Here is the pitch to Bennett. Met at the line of scrimmage. A flag flies in late by the head referee. So Maybe let's check the flag. Yep. There we go. Xavier Freeman, the defensive end for the Chargers making the stop. And if that last name sounds familiar, it is. His brother had a huge play for the Sooners last week in their opening win against UTEP. Yep, Gavin. Gavin did a lot of that on this field at uh, Heritage Hall last year. Last several years, two or three years. Also looking at what their father, Jason Freeman, right? Mm -hmm. He's yeah. a really good tight end and yeah. more than later at Oklahoma. He's on the coaching staff. Proud Papa, right? Oh, yeah. Wow. A walk on Gavin Freeman for OU and what, only one school, one of them, Texas Tech? Yeah. I'll be honest, I could never figure out why he wasn't more heavily recruited, but he showed his worth uh, in that one reverse play. Here is the pass to wide open player at the 45, still on his feet to the 35. Into Heritage Hall territory goes JV on Hill, their playmaker on offense, and it is a first down for the Tornadoes, Red Tornadoes, inside Chargers territory. Yeah, and just uh, he's wide open. Of course, you love those yards after the catch, and he's a senior. It is a Brahms first down from our farm to our store. Only Brahms gives you more. And Heritage Hall wants a timeout with 6.46 to play before halftime. So we will take a timeout as well. The Red Tornadoes driving already up 7-0. We'll be back right after this.
Welcome back to Heritage Hall, 7-0. Clinton with the football at the 33-yard line, first down and 10, and I believe there was movement along the offensive line. Procedure called against the Red Tornado, so it'll bring up first down and 15. Boy, you hate that. You come out of timeout, you, you got your play call, you got a drive going, and you get five yards back. Stay tuned for the 1-800-GOT-JUNK halftime report. We'll showcase this week's McIntyre Law Scholar athletes and have a conversation with our participating school administrators, plus Thursday night lights and Friday night rival highlights from across the country. All of that, including first half highlights of this game and more, coming up on the 1-800-GOT-JUNK halftime report. First down and 15, ball at the 38 for the Red Tornadoes. Here is the handoff, running right with a lot of room, and he dives across the 30, fumbled the football at the very end, was Garrison Rhodes, but he's going to be shy of a first down by about five yards, so he picked up 10 yards on the carry. It'll bring up second down and five now for Clinton from the 29. Nice play. we got to get guys hang on to the football, even though maybe he was down, maybe he wasn't, but uh, too many times this ball's been on the ground by both teams. High formation for the Red Tornadoes from the 29. Here's a handoff to Bennett, and he is going nowhere, stacked up at the line of scrimmage. Cooper Cookson, the linebacker, coming up to make a huge play to bring up third down. Cooper Cookson, a senior, 6'1", 200, led the team in tackles in week one and last year, only as a junior. Well, he ran to a wall. Well, actually, Cooper was the wall. You talk about guys who are smart. He's extremely smart. He's being looked at by all the Ivy League schools to attend college next year on a football scholarship. There you get a good look at him. Had 148 tackles as a junior a year ago, leading the Chargers. Here's the third down play. The pitch running left for Clinton. Looking for the first down marker. There's a flag down. I believe they're going to get Clinton with a hold. Yeah. It'll deny them of that first down, but on the carry was Contavion Hill, a sophomore running back. And there you see it. Trying to get around that edge there, and, you know, if you could get that block, get him hooked right there, but uh, there he's got, a, got some jersey, nice takedown. Jordan Brown on the uh, hold, it looks yeah. like, our big number 76. Which is why he got around the end. <laughs> <laughs> There's always something. Why was it so easy, Coach? Well, that's because your teammate was holding the other player. Details. Just details. They teach in practice, right, not to hold. So I don't understand why we always have holding in games. It just doesn't make sense, does it? Here is the quarterback keeper back up the middle on the quarterback draw. And he's going to be short of a first down. It'll bring up fourth down and nine from the 32. So this. You see that kicker? We're we gonna go for it. What are we gonna do here? That's a pretty long kick. We're looking about 50 yards. Well, you saw him kick it off to the back of the end zone. So. Yeah. There's always accuracy though. Does he have the accuracy to put it behind the? Exactly. Yep. The those two sticks up there, the uprights. They're thinking about it. I think they're gonna probably get the play clock down, and then call a timeout because they are yeah. not sure what they want to do because we have. Eight seconds on the play clock, and they are not close to run into play, so they will take a timeout. With exactly four minutes to play in the first half. So let's take a break from Heritage Hall High School. The Red Tornadoes leading the Chargers. 7-0. We're back right after this.
Back after the Clinton timeout, they have fourth down and nine at the Heritage Hall 32-yard line, and they will go for it, or so it seems. From the shotgun formation, Cooper Soley, the junior quarterback, Bennett to his right. Soley running right, looks downfield, and it's intercepted by the Chargers at the 27-yard line. Jackson Carter, the junior cornerback, making the interception the second of the night. The pressure really kind of pulled this play up right there, and even if you complete that, you're well short of the first down. So you got to throw it. It's fourth down. And, but uh, good play by here to talk. I won't take anything away from them, but that's, that still turned the ball over if you complete that pass. Stay tuned to the fourth quarter as we will select the Dynamite Driving Drive of the game. Dynamite Driving, driving tests seven days a week. We'll also, at the conclusion of tonight's game, we'll select our GMC player of the game. First down and 10, Heritage Hall, under four to play, and Bass's pass is overthrown. And will bring up second down and 10 for Heritage Hall from their own 27-26 yard line. We got 3:45 here to do something. Uh, if you can get get something going offensively here. Just a moment ago, you saw interim head coach Mark Adams for the Heritage Hall Chargers right there. Been here a long time and been with the Bogart family for even longer—35 years. Defensive coordinator for the Chargers. Said after the McGinnis game, he's used to worrying about the defense and. As head coach, you got to worry about the offense as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A little different for the defensive corner. Here is Bass looking to pass, being chased out of the pocket, throws it down the field, and overthrows his receiver on the far side of the field to Ori Walker. Let's go downstairs to Ed Murray. Ed, what do you have for us? Well, of course, River Faulkner, their starting running back, not able to play in this game. Well, now his replacement, Bladen Vogel, number six, he's on crutches over here on the sideline. Uniform is off, ice bag on his right leg, so he's done for the night. Something the Chargers did not want here in their second game of the season. They play John Marshall next week before district play starts a couple of weeks down the road. River Faulkner will be back next week. He is suspended for this game. Here is Bass, and he's going to overthrow his receiver again, Ori Walker. Really not typical of Andy Bass tonight, overthrowing his receivers like this, but just not finding the mark tonight. No, they're not. An offensive exception will play here or there. They just haven't really clicked offensively all night. Um. Last week in their victory over Millwood in a muddy condition, Andy Bass had 214 yards passing. Combined for three on the ground and through the air, he combined for over 325 yards on his own. Here's the fourth down play, and now a whistle, and it's going to be procedure against the Chargers. So it'll send it back a few more yards. Back to about the 22-yard line. The game against John Marshall, I guess, the battle of 120 seconds. You know. <laughs> That's right. Just, what, two, three miles away? Yeah. Just, yeah. Let's go back uh, west. That game will be played here at Heritage Hall. So John Marshall will come east. Yep. They got a new head coach at John Marshall this year. Yep. Here is the kick by Bass, end over end, bounces at midfield and takes a good bounce. Finally down around the 38-yard line with 3.16 to play in the first half. And the Red Tornado's low-scoring affair leading 7-0. They got the touchdown off of a Heritage Hall turnover. Heritage Hall has a couple of turnovers so far tonight of their own, but have not been able to convert them into points. Don't forget, coming up at the halftime, we will have the 1-800-GOT-JUNK halftime report. We will showcase this week's McIntyre Law Scholar athletes and also talk to the school administrators coming up on the 1-800-GOT-JUNK halftime report. First down and 10 for the Red Tornadoes from their 38-yard line with 3.16 to play. 
Solis pass out to the right side quickly. Nice little move at the 40 to the 45 to midfield to the 45 down to the 40. Still on his feet, tiptoeing down the side to the 10. Five touchdown, but there is a flag back at the 45 yard line. <laughs> well, it was fun to watch. <laughs> Jeremiah Barker was the one who took that all the way to the house, but this is coming back, unfortunately, for the Red Tornadoes. Yeah, Jeremiah uh, shows he's a playmaker. Uh, that may come back, but much like uh, a play earlier where he caught a, t a pass, it looks like holding's going to be the, the, the call. Let's see if they got JV on Hill, the wide receiver, right there. Right there, right yep. there yeah. Yep. And the coaches knew it. Did you see him? And look at that. But good balance. Yes. He didn't get knocked out of bounds. And that's a foot race. He, I bet he hadn't lost too many of those his whole life. No. What a run by Jeremiah Barker. Okay, I, not that I would tell the Clinton co coach because they know better than I am, but you might want to just find a way to get him the ball in space, see what he can do. Because uh, he's shown an ability to make some plays for them tonight. And this is one of those games you're going to need somebody to kind of make some stuff on their own. Heritage Hall's always had kind of those guys that could do that. Barker seems to be that guy for Clinton. That was about a 60-yard touchdown taken away by Barker, and now the far linesman blows his whistle to stop play with 3.02 to play. I think they're questioning whether they marked off the correct yardage on the penalty. And Mark Adams getting the uh, word from the referees. Not sure what all that was about, but they're going to keep it where it was. So we'll do it again, first down and 10. And everyone wants to know <laughs> what all that was for, and we don't know. <laughs> A lot of time left on the clock. We still got over three minutes. Yeah. Here's all took no time off the clock that last drive. Good look at Cooper Soley. I formation for Clinton. Here is the pitch to the tailback. Running left and tripped up across the 40 to the 42 yard line goes Garrison Rhodes. It's a gain of three. It's now second down and seven. So second down seven for Clinton. Clock continues to run. Two and a half minutes left to play in the first half. Hopefully we will talk to head coach John Higby coming up in going into the locker room at halftime. He's a pretty intense guy. Fifth season at Clinton. Not bad start for the head coach in five seasons, 40 and 14. And one state championship. Mm -hmm. Well, we talked about players, you know, living up to well, coaches, same thing. You know, you replace new coach, maybe one before you, and you got all those state championships in, in their past history. You want to add to that total. And, and frankly, your fans are expecting you to do that because you're Clinton. Yeah, and, and he brought back a lot of coaches to his staff that had won state championships prior to as players for Clinton. So a lot of a lot of his coaching staff actually played and grew up in Clinton and won state championships. So there you see a good the, the good look at John Higby, the head coach for the Red Tornadoes. A lot of good coaches out in Clinton over the years, right, Meyer? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, and then of course they're gonna take a time out here, see if they can drop to get this first down. But clock has stopped at one twenty eight to go here in the first half. Where is he? That's what, that's what right there, there he is right, right there. there yes i find him yep he's, he's pretty exciting oh we got a full moon beautiful night and actually you know i have i won't say this is the first time i've ever broadcasted from outside the press box but it is not a bad view up here oh no and look at that what a beautiful shot by our crew tonight they always get us the great shots and what we need now what we need now is a little boeing airplane to fly right through it a little bad pun for boeing of course but here we go. 
Let's watch some of the mistakes that we've seen by the Chargers tonight that have really That's first kept them out of the game. Yes. A couple of turnovers. And their first offensive possession went backwards. Bass just can't find the mark tonight. But tell you what, great pursuit by the Clinton defense also. Yeah, yeah they, they run real well. Of course, this is the pick that uh, Heritage Hall had and looked like put them in good position to perhaps get points on the board. They didn't. And then they fumbled. Fumbled yep. right back. Yep. And then there's the fumble. And there's the touchdown. So we're ready to go. Third down and seven at the 41 with a minute and a half to play. Here is number 21, Jeremiah, Jeremiah Barker. And Clinton close to getting a personal foul after the play, but Trey Bennett gets away with one. And so it'll be fourth down and a timeout. I believe Heritage Hall has called this timeout. They want the football back before halftime. Yeah. I think running back was begging for him to pitch the ball <laughs> on, that last, uh, <laughs> on that last run. He's like, pitch it, pitch it. I'm right here. You know, very similar to what happened to Clinton last week. They uh, gave the ball back with under a minute to play against McGinnis right before half. McGinnis took five seconds, basically, and scored a touchdown and really kind of took the cells, um, you know, took the wind out of the cells for the Red Tornadoes right before halftime. So they don't want, want a repeat of what happened last week right before halftime, but Heritage Hall would love it. A familiar C on the helmets there. Classic look, isn't it? Mm -hmm. There's some programs that kind of have just that look. That's usually the ones that win a lot. <laughs> yes. Funny how that works. Same uniforms year in and year out, right? Yeah. yeah. And they're so, going to go for it. No, no, they're, they're going to punt it. Punt it, okay. Yeah, you got your oh, that's right, Jordan yeah. Brown way back deep. Let's see if he can get another 80-yard punt off. This would only count if he went into the end zone for 55 yards, but it's going to go a lot further than that if he gets a good punt away. High spiraling kick. And it's going to bounce at the 20-yard line and down by the Red Tornadoes around the 17. And I'm going to tell you right now, if a college is not looking at him as a kicker already, I know he's a lineman as well. Maybe he can play double, yeah. play two positions in, in college. But what a foot this guy has. Well, in a game like this, that can be a real weapon. Yeah. You know, you keep pinning people deep because the offense at Heritage Hall hadn't shown the ability to drive the ball and put, you know, have a lot of playmakers. So this, that could be the difference in winning a game. You're up 7-0. You want to put more points on the board, obviously, but you can make them go the long way to do it. Let's see what the Chargers can do with a minute 10 remaining in the second quarter. Trailing 7 nothing. First down and 10 from their 17. Bass is being rushed and sacked back at the five-yard line. Trey Bennett on the sack for the Red Tornadoes. Back in the backfield, untouched. Well, he scored the touchdown, so now he's doing it on defense. Keep that in mind for a player of the game kind of guy. Three Let's players get... missing. At number 15, you might want to block him. It is a loss of nine yards, second down and 19, and I believe now Heritage Hall is going to just let the clock run out or... Let it run down and call timeout. They want to take a chance deep in their own territory, turning the ball over and getting an unfortunate touchdown right before half. Yeah, with your Clinton, do you want to just like make them snap it? Got them pinned deep, got a timeout left. Well, they're going to let the clock run out and they're going to call timeout. Heritage Hall will call timeout with a second left on the play clock with 18 seconds remaining. On the game clock here in half number one, seven nothing Clinton with the lead. Next week we are in Midwest City once again. We will have the Bombers hosting the Putnam City North Panthers in week three of our Friday Night Rivals broadcast. Saw Midwest City last week in a good game at Carl Albert. Let's go downstairs to Ed Murray. Ed, what do you have for us? Well, guys, you don't combine for 24 state championships and not have special players. The last time I was on this field, on the first play of the game, a guy by the name of Wes Welker <laughs> went 80 yards for a touchdown run. He kicked the extra point. Welker kicked off. Two plays late, later, Welker intercepted the pass. On the next play, Welker caught a 30-something-yard touchdown pass. Welker kicked the extra point. He kicked off. Three plays and a punt. Welker returned the punt, 70 yards for another touchdown. 
and then they called timeout. And I went over to the coach, the clock's not running, coach. Why'd you call a timeout? He said, look down in the end zone. I looked, and Welker was puking because he was <laughs> tired. Five minutes, he had a 21-point lead. After the timeout, he kicked the extra point. Later on in the game, he kicked a 57-yard field goal. Pretty special player. And the rest is history, as yeah, they say, Ed, right? You bet. You didn't mention he sold popcorn at halftime. <laughs> <laughs> what a night he had. Pretty good player. They've had a few out here. Sterling Shepard, put him on that list. Barry J. Sanders, put him on that list. I mean, yeah, they had some players out here. Another timeout. Clinton, I believe, called this timeout. So they want to put time back on the clock, I believe. Maybe 15 or 16 seconds, not sure. Right now it shows 14, and they're going to put one second back on the clock. Heritage Hall just trying to go to the locker room, and Clinton's not going to let him. Yeah, I, yeah, I'd call it timeout, make him punt from the end zone. You never know what happens. Maybe they fumble a snap or get a block or you get a return or something. I mean, just you got them pinned deep. They haven't done much offensively in the first half. I take my chance they're not going to go 95 yards on you. It is third down for Heritage Hall. Of course, this is. And Andy Bass will take a knee, and I believe Clinton will let it go, or are they going to call a timeout? They're out of timeouts. Oh, they're out of timeouts, yes, exactly. That's why they're not going to call a timeout. So the Red Tornadoes. Lead here at halftime by a score of 7 nothing, and a lot of turnover so far in the first half, uh, Myron. But, again, Clinton has taken advantage of them so far. Yeah, they have. Uh, they've got the big play there up 7-0, and that's a, that's a pretty big lead considering how this first half has gone and how they've been able to kind of control things. So, you know, we'll see what adjustments both teams make at halftime to kind of get some more offense going. Well, Clinton trying to come off that loss last week to McGinnis, and they have the lead here at halftime. Let's go downstairs to Ed Murray, who's with the head coach. Yeah, Coach Higby, uh, early turnover. Oh, my goodness, after last week with your defense, three plays and out. Then that 70-plus yard punt really turned the momentum. It did. It did. We're, doing, we're, we're playing better. We're playing more like we earned that C on our helmet. Zero on the scoreboard. You can't ask for anything better. Yes, I can. I can ask for 14 points on the board. Yeah, <laughs> one call back. Good luck in the second half. Coach Higby, of course, alluding to that great play by uh, Jeremiah Barker. They got called back due to a penalty. So he's up 7 nothing. We will uh, be back with more at the halftime as Heritage Hall trails Clinton. The Red Tornado's up 7 to nothing. You're watching Friday Night Rivals. Now, time for the 1-800-GUT-JUNK Halftime Report.
You're watching Friday Night Rivals. Now, time for the 1-800-GOT-JUNK Halftime Report. Thank you for watching Friday Night Rivals. I'm Noble McIntyre of McIntyre Law. If you're wondering why I'm wearing my Burns Flat Eagles High School jerseys, because I'm here to introduce this week's Scholar Athlete. Liam Burton is Heritage Hall Scholar Athlete of the Week. Nothing unlucky about the number 13 for this guy, who's the Team Offensive Player of the Week. In addition to football, he's also a golfer and a member of the French Club with a GPA of 3.9 a two-way player who plays wide receiver on with safety, linebacker, or whatever is needed on the other side of the ball in his favorite sport, a football. I think it's an ultimate team sport. Yeah. You know, you get to build bonds, you know, be with these guys. You know, I only have one more year with them, but memories and stuff, last driver. He started attending Heritage Hall as an eighth grader, and he's come across some great teammates. My freshman year, I had Phillip, who's at Harvard now, but Phillip was... Smithman? Yeah, Phillip Smithman. Yeah. I mean, he was just a super good leader. And, and of course, the last three years I had Gavin, and saw what he just did uh, last week at OU. So I was like super excited, but I mean I thought that was awesome. After football, that 34 he got on his ACT could take him to a career in engineering or finance. Nicholas O'Neill is Clinton's Scholar Athlete of the Week. You could call him champ, considering he was part of state championship teams in football and soccer at Clinton. You can't overlook the grades considering he's a member of the National Honor Society with a 3.98 GPA. Sports plays a big role in that number. If I don't have the sports, I wouldn't think I would like push myself as hard as I do to get the grades to play the sport, if that makes any sense. So I think I put as much, much time into the school that I do with the sports just so I can play the sports that I love and I like to play. When it comes to watching soccer, La Liga is his choice. The footwork you see in soccer helps him on the football field. You say go play college soccer if I can. I feel like I'm a little better at soccer. You know, I've been playing it a little longer, but I wouldn't say it's my favorite one. Nicholas is a big Seattle Seahawks fan, dating back to the Legion of Boom days with Richard Sherman being his guy. That might explain his preference for playing defense over offense. Congratulations to you both. And remember, all scholar athletes have a chance to win a $5,000 scholarship. It's all brought to you by Friday Night Rivals on CW34. Well, welcome back to Heritage Hall, where the Clinton Red Tornadoes lead the Chargers 7-0. Joining me is the principal from Clinton High School, Chad Pugh. And, Chad, we just heard a, a nice piece with Nicholas O'Neill, very special person. Makes a really good kid, hard worker. Obviously, you can watch him tonight and see how hard he works, but he does the same thing in the classroom. A uh, real soft-spoken kid, uh, got a good heart, and we're, we're super proud of him. You took speaking of heart, every one of them's playing hard out there. They're playing very physical. Um, you know, we kind of needed that. Had a rough week last week, and you see they they came out tonight, tonight ready to play. As a principal, this is your third year. Your first two years were kind of chaotic, what I say. Does it feel a little normal year to get started here yeah you know when you my first year it seemed like the that was the covid year so we had a we had a rough start there and this year has been it's kind of kind of what you expect it to be so that's been nice hopefully we can keep that going chad here in oklahoma city we've got a high school well john marshall's two miles away from here there's high schools all over the place in clinton it's clinton high school what does that mean for a community like clinton to have that one high school and to have 17 state football championships a lot of other state championships as well it's the most prideful place that i know of and we're really proud of that um you know, every home game is filled, uh, no doubt about it. It's uh, it's the place to be. Uh, our our parents, you know, we can see if you look over there, our, our parents travel. Uh, but at home, it's a, it's a different kind of atmosphere. And it's something that everybody in town takes pride in. you got former players and then people that didn't play that still come back and watch Clinton football. Well, we talk about the staff with Coach Higby. I think he five, six, or seven of his coaches weren't just players at Clinton. They were on state championship teams at Clinton. Well, yeah, and you can kind of say that, you know, most of the time if you if you played at Clinton very long, you have a state championship. We've been very fortunate. We've had some great coaches over the year. You know, Coach Lee, the longtime coach, is still up in the box helping him call plays and do some things. So tradition's a big deal. You know, and I've hired several teachers in the last couple of years that are all former Clinton graduates. And a lot of them played football. And uh, it's that pride, the pride that keeps coming back, and, and people are proud to be from Clinton. You're glad to have the monkey off your back. They got a state title for you to make it seven decades in a row, so you're off the hook for the last, next, rest of this whole decade. Yeah, hopefully we can get a couple more, but you're right. I'm glad they got that first one out of the way. All right. Chad Pugh, the principal of Clinton High School. Good luck in the second half. Here is Clinton Red Tornadoes. They have the lead 7 to nothing over the Heritage Hall Chargers. We'll talk to Heritage Hall president when we come back here on our Halftime Report.
You're watching Friday Night Rivals. Now, time for the 1-800-GUT-JUNK Halftime Report. Back here at Heritage Hall where the Clinton Red Tornadoes lead the Chargers 7-0. Joining me is the president of Heritage Hall, Mr. Aaron uh, Fetro. Did I get that right, Aaron? Uh, we just talked to your uh, scholar-athlete, Liam Burton, already made some plays here tonight. Yeah, Liam's a great kid. Uh, you know, it's hard to talk about Liam and, and not talk about how, how bright he is. I mean, on the field, off the field, his teammates are always on his case because he's thinking about seven plays ahead and in the classroom, AP physics, AP everything. So he's just a joy to have around, and, and sometimes he thinks above the coaches. They, 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 they get on him about that. But great kid, Liam. We appreciate Heritage Hall hosting us in our second year of Friday Night Rivals. What does it mean to Heritage Hall to host a, a live TV game like this? Well, this is great. Our fans show up for a game like this when they know that we're going to have it on TV. And, you know, every, every Friday night is like this around here, but this makes it a little bit more special having you here. What is Heritage Hall High School? Sure. So, you know, Heritage Hall, I would define it as a place. It's, it's a, really a character place and a community place. We, uh, even our littles are here. You know, pre, we're pre-K through 12. And our littlest kids, the Charger code is huge for them, which is, you know, to learn, to lead, to serve. And they start that this age. And it goes all the way through the high school. So community and character are the big, big fundamentals here. This is your second year as president. What has surprised you the most? That's a great question. I think really the breadth of experiences that, that our, our kids get. You know, they, not just athletically, but in the, in the classroom, independent studies programs and laptops in the, in, for the littles in the lower school. And, and then outside the classroom, our, our theater is award-winning, our choirs. So we really concentrate on getting, and we do things 100%. We started eSports this year, and boom, blew up. I mean, you know, just any time we do something, the parents get behind it like crazy, and the community is just huge supporters of everybody. Well, we got a little something from our uh, main sponsor, Norman Regional Hospital Ortho Central. Proud to present our game host in this time, Heritage Hall, a charitable donation amount of $500. I want to thank Ortho Central and thank Heritage Hall for hosting us on Friday Night Rivals. Well, thanks for this, and we'll uh, put it right back to our students. Thank you so much. All right. That's the uh, president of Heritage Hall. It seemed hoping for a rally here in the second half as he's down 7-0. We'll have more of halftime when we come back. You're watching Friday Night Rivals. Now, time for the 1-800-GUT-JUNK Halftime Report. And welcome back, everyone, to Heritage Hall High School in Oklahoma City. 7-0 our halftime score. The Clinton Red Tornadoes leading the Heritage Hall Chargers in what Myron has really become. I did not expect a low-scoring game, but very low-scoring tonight. Yeah, uh, 
it's much lower scoring than I thought it would be, and really it's to the point which team is going to want to stay away from the big t uh, turnover, but also which pl which team can get a play made by somebody. Maybe it's not designed to go that, but somebody goes beyond uh, what the play design is and, and make a play for the team to perhaps lead them to a win. Let's look at some of the first-half stats uh, that these teams combined for, and I'm sure we had some good plays, but here we go. Total yards for Clinton, 120. And they were pretty balanced, 63 passing, 57 rushing compared to Heritage Hall, who can't run the football tonight at all. Yeah, and that's been a big problem for them, uh, not being able to run the football. And, and that's uh, reflected in just the, the total yards and then, of course, the rushing yards, things of that nature. Uh, thing jumps out, both teams have two turnovers. Yeah. We talked about that being one of the keys, staying away from turnovers. They both have two apiece. And uh, that's that's been a problem with the offenses as well. And both teams were driving on those turnovers and and one of those turnovers led to uh, seven points, our score. So let's look at some of the highlights tonight. Heritage Hall started. They just could not get going. And there's the pick by Clinton. Yeah, interception there and looked like uh, it might lead to something. Here's a play, but you fumble it. Uh, both teams have had trouble just hanging on to the football. And uh, Clinton, you know, ended up returning that. There's another fumble. That led it, to the touchdown in yeah, the end zone. In the yep. end zone, yep. you know. And... So I'm sure both uh, coaches talked to him about ball security. This is on fourth down. you got to throw the pass. You know, it's no point just taking a sack or whatever. But even if you complete that, that's not a first down. And, uh, of course, there's another sack right there. So the defense is really kind of control things. And you're looking for somebody to make a play, somebody to, you know, maybe catch a pass, make a few guys miss, go the distance. Clinton had one of those in the first half. It was called back by a holding penalty. Uh, that's the kind of that's the kind of play that can win you this game. Last week, Andy Bass had 114 yards on the ground rushing. They only have two yards tonight, so they need to get that rushing game going somehow. Yeah, and they're and they're still in one of those teams. That's that's their bread and butter is uh, to run the football. They need to get that going. Sure. All right, second half coming up after the break. The Red Tornadoes lead at seven nothing. Come back and join us on Friday Night Rivals right after this. Friday Night Rivals would like to thank our sponsors for tonight's game. Norman Regional Hospital, Ortho Central, GMC, McIntyre Law, and 1-800-GOT-JUNK. We'd also like to thank High Five Media, Oklahoma Ford Dealers, Brahms Ice Cream and Dairy Stores, Rose State College, Homeland Grocery, Dynamite Driving, and the United States Coast Guard.
Welcome back, everyone, to Heritage Hall High School. We are at halftime. The Red Tornadoes lead Heritage Hall 7-0. The Chargers back out on the field, as is interim head coach Mark Adams, and he's with our Ed Murray. Ed. Well, Coach Adams, uh, we talked before the game. This is not the first time you've been in a situation with these guys from Clinton. No, we seem to be trailing them a lot here lately. Hopefully we're going to respond. First half, you got some turnovers, but just offensively never seemed to get any kind of rhythm. Yeah, pretty flat. Give them credit. They, they whipped us on the line of scrimmage. And we had, we had a couple of interesting conversations in there with some, some uh, interesting words, you know. Anything you can share with us, what you told them at halftime? Absolutely not. I think you're going to see a different team come out. They're going to come out a little fire. So. All right. You heard it. Coach Adams, good luck in the second half. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. So, they will, they will talk with their actions, not their words, here in the second half, fellas. All right, Ed, and here we are. Myron, I don't know how many games you've ever broadcasted outside, but what, what, what a great atmosphere, actually, to be almost in the stands with the fans here tonight in uh, perfect night for football. It, it is. Uh, my mom's 93. She's been saying falls on his way, and uh, I think she's right. But it is a gorgeous night for football. Uh, I would have loved been a fly on the wall, though, in the Heritage Hall locker room just to hear what uh, Coach Adams was talking about, words I guess we can't say on television. But we're going to see if his uh, guys come out with a little bit more fire and, uh, as he say, I guess the big guys up front do their job a little bit better. There you see our uh, vantage point, Davis Dunkelberger right here, raising his hand. The numbers guy. Statistician. Yeah, he runs the numbers for us. Big crowd here on hand at Heritage Hall. Exactly. Heritage Hall had the, uh, you know, had chances, but just the offense just could not get going. Yeah, they, they, they may have a good play, and then they come back with two or three negative plays, uh, putting the ball on the ground, fumbles, things of that nature. Just never really got any kind of offensive consistency. And really you could say that, I guess, for both teams. I mean, this neat, you know, Clinton had been up down the field either. Uh, but which team could kind of get some offensive rhythm going and, you kind of, even as a play caller, where you feel like you're calling some plays, you know the guys are, are, are doing well that night, uh, can win this game the second half. Neither team has controlled it. Clinton's got the touchdown, but they're only up by seven points. So sure. this is still a winnable game for Heritage Hall. Or Clinton can take control and, uh, you know, get a win tonight. We'll see. And you might, you know, some people might say, well, they're, Heritage Hall is without their head coach tonight, but Brett Bogart not being here obviously is a factor, but Mark Adams has been around forever. He knows the program, mm -hmm. and I would not think they would lose a beat with him. No, you can't put that on him. I mean, and, and like I say, the uh, halftime adjustments that they make as much as anything. Of course, they got some guys banged up here in the first half, too, a couple guys who are, are not going to finish the game. That may have a, an impact also. But your, your, your senior leadership, your guys that are your best players, uh, can they step up and lead some of the younger guys? You're at home and uh, beat a really good Clinton team. Or can Clinton, again, can they come back? They, they were pretty sore that they lost last week to McGinnis. Sure. Uh, <laughs> won state last year, and they think they're pretty good. Let's talk about uh, someone who I know you know very well, Stanford White, former Douglas High School football coach, mm -hmm. uh, died at the age of 77 recently. He was more than just a football coach for a lot of players and a lot of just students at Douglas High School. Yeah, I uh, got a call last night about that. Uh, 27 seasons as a head coach uh, at Douglas, played there in the 60s, 1976 to 2003 as a head coach. And, yeah, uh, and as a lot of great uh, coaches, Hall of Fame guys, it wasn't just about the football with him. Yeah. And he helped set the, uh, a lot of guys on the, on the right path uh, to becoming good men and uh, you know, say a prayer for those, his family, and people who are really close to him. Uh, but was uh, when I was first getting into this this business, I didn't grow up in Oklahoma City or anything like that. He's one of those coaches that you knew were yeah they won a lot of games, but they were bigger than just the game in terms of just coaching football. They were they were leading men and teaching guys how to be men. He's sure. one of those guys. Yeah, Clinton will get the uh, football to start the second half in. I'll make one final comment on that, Mark. We have such great high school football coaches in Oklahoma, mm -hmm. uh, probably anywhere. You know, I'm sure every other state can say the same thing, but Oklahoma has some really good football coaches. Yeah, and guys who are coaches, I mean, they're, they're, they're teachers of the game, but they're also teachers in life. And uh, they, I mean, they understand not everybody's going to go to the NFL, the NBA, or even play in college. But the things you learn in athletics – will t take you for the rest of your life, and that's the good thing about coaching. Well, we are underway here in the second half with the Ortho Central kickoff, a pooch kick by the Chargers and taken by an up man for the Red Tornadoes, returned out to around the 31-yard line, and so Clinton will start with the football and a 7-0 lead here in the second half. 
Well, we'll find out right, right uh, early, see which uh, team can come out and kind of take control of this game and give a, uh, give a better performance in the second half. Be more consistent. Spot the football actually at the 33. So first down and 10 as we start the second half of play here at Heritage Hall High School. Cooper Soley, the quarterback, and he will take the handoff and right back up over the middle. We'll get a couple of yards across the 35 or up to about the 35-yard line, a gain of two, second down and eight for Clinton, who I would not be surprised if they keep it on the ground here in the second half. Yeah, because... You know, who can, who's going to control the line of scrimmage? You mentioned they're not very big up front, but offensive line play a lot of times technique and leverage and everything else. Um, you know, we'll see. Is it the front of Heritage Hall or the front of Clinton that kind of imposes their will here? Here's a handoff right back up the middle to Bennett. And he'll get a couple more yards. It'll be third down and long now for the Red Tornadoes. And when you look at Clinton, just a marvelous program that uh, that they have out in Western Oklahoma. Again, we've talked about it, 17 state titles. But, you know, since 2004, Myron, they've won five state titles, and in that they've only had two undefeated seasons. So they lost last week, of course. They still could come back and win the state championship, as they've proven five times since 2004. And here is a stop by the Chargers. As Soli is going nowhere, yeah, and so it's going to bring up fourth down. I mean, Heritage Hall, you got what you wanted, a three and out. And he was well short of the first down, so we'll see what they do when they get the football. But you mentioned about the, you know, not, the unde not having the undefeated seasons. What that tells you, when they get to playoff time, they're ready to go. That's when they're ready to go. That's when they go undefeated. <laughs> that's the <laughs> Only most time important. it counts. Yeah. Only time it counts, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's when you want to go undefeated. Here is Jordan Brown to kick it away standing back at his 25 high kick not as deep as the other ones but taken and not sure if heritage hall touched it we're going to find out clinton recovers it back at the 21 yard line but the referees are saying that the chargers did not touch the football a huge break for heritage hall let's watch it wow Woo, that's close isn't it yeah it's close and he was from there on the running like he thought they touched. You can't see if he actually. Oops. Ah, a lot of bodies there, man. A lot of bodies there. Uh, the referee was, well, the back judge was right there. He had a good look at it as he was on the right side. Wow, that is. The only person who knows whether you touched it is Ori Walker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he's obviously going to deny it. Yeah, he just ran off the field like, well, yeah, I didn't touch that. Here's the first down play for Andy Bass, and he's going to gain a yard up to the 24-yard line. May have gotten two. Actually, they're going to spot it at the 25, so it'll bring up second down and eight. Looked like he had a hole there, but somebody grabbed the ball, and he started. He needs that. Yeah, he needs that. He secured that before he started going forward. It's a positive yard for the Chargers to start here in the second half. Trailing 7 nothing. Bass looking left, throws it, has his receivers short of the 30 up to the 35. And first down out to the 40 to the 41-yard line. Goes Ori Walker, his leading receiver from a year ago and so far through two games this year. And it is a first down. An Oklahoma Ford dealer's first down for Heritage Hall. That might be their best uh, play since the deep pass to Liam Burton in the first quarter. Offensive play, that is. I mean, that's. And when you look at Ori Walker, six foot three, 190. So he has good size. And he just threw it up to him, although he was wide open on the play. But still, Ori Walker with good size. First down play for the Chargers. Quick pass out. And it's incomplete as he was looking for his receiver out of the backfield. Cooper Cooks second, it. And ten. second down 10 for Heritage Hall at the 41. A little bit low. Had a guy in his face. Bass did, but trying to get something quick. Get some positive yards. Instead, it's uh, incomplete. First year starter for the Chargers actually transferred in from another school his sophomore year. Had to sit out his sophomore year. And then as a backup last year. Or back, I'm sorry, first-year starter. He's only a junior, so he had to sit out last year as a sophomore. 
by the transfer rules. Here's the second down play. Handoff, running left. Nice little cut at midfield. And across midfield into Clinton territory goes Barrett Travis. He's going to be just shy of a first down. Got some good blocking there. Made a few guys miss. Picked up about nine there, so that's a, that's a positive play. The offense appears to be moving better here in this first drive than they did the entire first half. Move the ball back to midfield. Here's a quick pass for a first down. Out to Liam, and he's got some more room across the 30, still on his feet down to the 32-yard line. Those are scholar athlete Liam Burton for another Oklahoma Ford dealer's first down for the Chargers, and now this is the Chargers team that we're used to. Yeah. Yeah, they're uh, running some up-tempo offense and moving the ball down through, and in some cases shorter passes, but yards after the catch. Ball at the 32-yard line, first down and 10. Bass quickly out to his receiver again across the 20. Another first down for the Chargers. Ori Walker with the first down catch. Another Oklahoma four dealers first down. And they're inside the Rose State College red zone for the first time tonight. This is point that rhythm you get in as a play caller. Some positive plays, you kind of get, them, get a flow going. Here's another quick pass out to Burton. Did he catch it? No, they're going to say he dropped it. The ball may have been tipped at the line of scrimmage. It'll bring up second down. So now Adam Bass, I say Adam Bass. I have a friend named Adam Bass. Andy Bass looking for two people now, Ori Walker and Liam Burton. Yeah, those have been the big playmakers on this drive. Second down, 10 play. And the ball is loose, and the Chargers may have just turned it over. And Clinton says they have it, and they do. Well, that's a buzz kill for Heritage Hall and a big play for Clinton because they were moving the ball and just never got the exchange from the quarterback. Barrett Travis was the running back who did not get it from Bass. And so they turn it over inside the red zone. Their third turnover of the night. And Clinton takes over. We'll see if, the, uh, if Clinton can get some of that mojo going with their offense. First down and 10 for the Red Tornadoes. And here is Rhodes running right. A stiff arm and finally pushed out of bounds near the 25-yard line. And actually, they're going to say he went back out more toward the 20. So a gain of one yard, second down and nine. They just strung that play out, never was able to find a crease or being able to turn that defensive end inside to get to the outside of him. This is where you see Heritage Hall can can they go three and out again on defense. There's a second down play, quick pass out, but by Soli, and that pass is going to be dropped by his receiver. So to bring up now third down and long for Clinton, and this is the exact position that Heritage Hall wanted to put him in. He was looking for Jeremiah Barker, who had that great run on the holding mm -hmm. call that came back for about a 70-yard touchdown run in the first half. Yeah, that's, and really that's kind of like extended handoff. He's just trying to get the ball in his hand, see if he can make a guy miss and get a field with some positive yards. Pass a little bit low. Actually, they spot the football. Was that a backwards pass? So he's going to lose a couple yards, third down and 11. They must have ruled that a backwards pass. And here is Soli. Looking right, has his receiver and a flag thrown where he caught it. That is uh, DeAndre Francher who made the catch, and there's a flag right where he caught it. He pushed off to get open, or? He's sure the first down. And it may have been incomplete anyway. I'm not sure of the call, illegal receiver down the field for the Red Tornadoes. It was an incomplete pass, and so... They will decline, Heritage Hall will decline the penalty. It will be, bring up fourth down for 
the Red Tornadoes who have to kick it away deep in their own territory. And you would think Heritage Hall would come out with good field position after this punt by Jordan Brown. Unless he can boom one like he did in the first half. Got a roll on that one, but. Uh... Brown standing back at his own seven yard line. Low snap, and he gets it away. A line drive kick, returnable by the Chargers up to midfield to the 45, spins his way up, and out of a tackle and down to the 40-yard line. Goes Ori Walker, a nice return on the punt, and so the Chargers have good field position again to start out with, 6.44 to play in the third quarter. Good return. Yeah, good return. Spun out of a tackle there, and gets some good field position, and... Okay, you had to fumble the last drive, but then you move the ball down the field. Can you come out with the same kind of attitude and success? You got to hang on to the football, though. Heritage Hall crowd trying to get their team back into this one, trailing 7 0. Only one touchdown, five turnovers in the game combined by the two schools. Here's the handoff right back up the middle, a gain of a couple. They go right back to Barrett Travis, who fumbled the last time he had it. Quarterback Cooper Soley on the tackle. You know, you see a lot of quarterbacks in high school play defensive back. No, mm -hmm. Cooper Soley plays defensive end. <laughs> that means he's a tough guy. <laughs> he's a tough guy. He's not playing on defensive back. Well, that's what John Higby told me and Ed Murray before the game. They got some tough people out in Clinton. And here's a good run by... Travis down the sideline, across the 25 for a first down, right in front of Ed Murray, and the Chargers again knocking on the door, looking for their first touchdown of the night. Here it is. Yeah, just got to the end on outside. And nothing but green grass right there. Good saving tackle would have got another six, seven yards without that tackle. Oklahoma four dealers first down. Here's the play. Hand off to Travis again. He's going to kind of dive forward to the 24-yard line, a gain of one. It'll bring up second down. And Ed, you, had a, you have a good view right down there in front of you. Definitely, even on the sideline, guys, the speech, uh, the assistant coaches heard it too. They're coaching with a lot more fire here in the second half than they did in the first half. You got to do better talk at halftime. <laughs> Second down and, well, officially no gain, so second down and 10. Bass, little quick pass out on a cut pattern, and his receiver down to the 15-yard line goes Rashad Smith. Boy, he threw that in traffic, Myron, but yeah. Smith was kind of cutting back across the green. Everyone moving left. Yeah, and that ball kind of swung out from his body a couple times right there. Boy, you, you got a you block got a, from the referee, yeah. Gotta make that sure that you had some fumbling issues in the first half. Gotta make that body keep it high and tight, as they say. A gain of nine, third down and one. The ball spotted at the 15 inside the Roger State College red zone. Crucial play here. Travis back up the middle, across the 10, down to the seven. Well, I don't think he's in doubt the offensive line's did a better job. He had a nice crease up front. Get this hole right there. Grayson Hume, the center, making a good block on that play. First down and goal. The handoff, flags fly everywhere. Let's see what the penalty is going to be, probably against Heritage Hall. It's going to be against Clinton, illegal participation. 12 guys out there or something. Or? So that will take the football inside the five-yard line. Let's go downstairs, Ed Murray. Ed, what do you have for us? Yeah, the defense made a late substitution. Number 68 did not get to his sideline before the ball was snapped. That was the penalty. All right, good eye, Ed. Thank you. So first down and goal. Ball spotted at the four-yard line. Here is Bass. Keeps it himself. Another flag is thrown in there. Bass trying to get into the end zone, and he does. But let's check the flag first. And it's going to be holding against Heritage Hall. 
hold, the fumble. They just, they're making life difficult. Let's see. Uh, there it is right there on the center, number 50, Grayson Hume grabbing the jersey. Tell you what, these referees don't miss much, do they? No, that's a pretty good call. Yeah. Penalty spots the football back at the 12 yard line. First down and goal at the 12. Here is a quick pass out to the right side with some room and a nice open field tackle. Cooper Cookson on the reception. That's Nicholas O'Neill, yep. Nicholas O'Neill, our scholar athlete for the Red Devil, Red Devils, Red Tornadoes. There's also a Red Devils in the state. That's a good open field tackle. You make that him miss. If he doesn't score, he gets inside the five, somewhere near the goal line. Second down and eight after the gain of four yards for Heritage Hall. Bass, quick pass, lobs it up toward the corner of the end zone. It is caught. Is he in? No, he's not. He's out of bounds after a great catch by Ori Walker. And he comes up limping. Let's watch this one, Myron, from the corner of the end zone. There's Jocelyn. Catch. He's out. Yep. He's out. Great work by our photographers down on the field to catch that as Ori Walker about, what, six inches out of bounds. That's good in Canada. It's 20-yard end zone. Yeah. That's easy. They get to the CFL. So despite coming up limp limping, Ori is going to stay in the game. It is third down and goal. Here is the pass over the middle to Walker. He comes right back to him. Touchdown, Chargers. Oh, he's faking him out. I thought I was hurt, but I was okay. <laughs> a Homeland Grocery touchdown. Homeland Grocery, your homegrown advantage, and he was wide open made it look easy. Oh, yeah, that was too easy, way too easy. No resistance whatsoever. Extra point away from tying this up at seven. Everyone lined up on the uh, left side except for the center. Let's see if they shift over or they're going to go for two. Now they're going to set up for the point after attempt. Tense, under 10 seconds on the game clock. You better get it off. They better hurry. Three seconds. And the kick is up. And it is good as Carter counts adds the point after. we got a good one here to Heritage Hall. The Chargers come back and they have tied it up at seven on the pass from number seven. We're back with more of the third quarter on Friday Night Rivals right after this. Welcome back, everyone, to Heritage Hall. Ori Walker on the touchdown reception, tying the score at seven. Junior 6'3", 190-pound receiver, already being looked at by OSU, K-State, a couple of schools, Colorado School of Mines, Emporia State, all wanting Ori Walker to wear their uniform. 
In the first half, Heritage Hall, Heritage Hall Myron only had three first downs. On that drive alone, they had five. Yeah. Well, they've caught more snapper in the second half. I don't think there's any doubt in that. Coach Adams was right. Uh, turn over the first drive, but then they get the second drive. They punch it in. This is going to be up on Clinton now. They've got to get their offense going. Here's the ortho central kickoff, a little pooch kick taken by an up man for Clinton. Aiden Crumley, who initially dropped it, but recovered it. Coming up at the fourth quarter, we will select the dynamite driving drive of the game. Dynamite driving, driving test seven days a week. As you get a good look at the crowd from Clinton on the far side. Standing room only around the complex. There you see, I thought that, what was that, the student section, Mark? Student section. Yeah, right below us. They've been pretty good, though, with us here. We yeah. haven't had to uh, be on a seven-second delay. <laughs> <laughs> on their best behavior. Yeah, exactly. Here's the pitch running left for the uh, Red Tornadoes. And Rhodes gets maybe a yard. It'll bring up a second down. And a long nine for Clinton, who let's see how they respond after the Heritage Hall touchdown. We got a good one, low scoring, but it's been a good game. Yeah, I think I think it's picking up here in the second half. And yeah, and Clinton did bring a lot of fans. I mean, it's about an hour and a half. I'm 45 minutes from Clinton to get here. They brought a lot of fans to this game, so give them the, their credit as well. But we got to get something going offensively. Where's Jeremiah Barker? Here is Soli looking to pass it, looking for Barker deep, and he's got him at the 30-yard line to the 20 to the 10. Touchdown, Clinton. This is why you asked for Jeremiah Barker, asking you shall receive. <laughs> oh, Myron, you called it. Unbelievable. The Red Tornadoes come back on two plays and take the lead. The guy's a playmaker. I mean, this is just a flat-out foot race, and you forget it. He's gone. 67-yard touchdown reception. Yes, your playmakers, you got to get the ball to them. No doubt about it. Here's the point after attempt now. This is not Justin Brown. This is Sammy Velez, and it is good. And they add the point after and take a 14-7 lead. We're heading to break, but we're going to watch the 67-yard touchdown run by reception by Jeremiah Barker. We're back after this. Back at Heritage Hall, 14-7, the Red Tornadoes with the lead. Here is Jordan Brown on the Ortho Central kickoff. And this ball is going to bounce and finally go out of bounds around the five-yard line. And so the Chargers will take over. Let's go back to that play to Jeremiah Barker, only a junior wide receiver, running back. They put him wherever they need him. On two plays, although one did not count, of course it came back on a holding call. He has on 100, he has 132 yards. Let's go downstairs to Ed Murray. Ed, what do you have for us? Well, one of the reasons perhaps for that lopsided loss to McGinnis last week is Clinton did not have Jeremiah Barker. This is his first game of the season. He started the year with a hip injury. I'd say his hip is doing a okay. 
<laughs> no doubt about it. Yeah, everything's working on him. So the Chargers have the football at the 35. After the kick went out of bounds. And here is Bass. The handoff back up the middle. A gain of one for Barrett Travis. It'll bring up second down and a long nine. This is one of those, I mean, at Heritage Hall, you come out, you have a good drive, you tie the game up. They respond with a big play. Now, how do you respond? You know, that's a, that's a bit of a gut punch. They throw it right back at you. Now, you see if you can respond. And if you don't get a touchdown, get a field goal. Move the ball. Don't need a three and out. Here's a quick pass out to Burton along the left side, trying to find some room. Still on his feet up to the 45-yard line. That's going to be awfully close to first down. Let's see where they spot it. Yeah, the mark's it be should anything. be a first down for Heritage Hall as they do spot it right at the 45-yard line. It's going to be in Oklahoma. Four dealers first down. Still a minute and a half to play here in the third quarter in a, what has been so far a quick-moving ball game. Three wide receivers to the far side. Ori Walker to the near side. Travis, the lone running back behind Bass. Low snap. Bass will keep it. Around the right side. Gets a first down and more. Down the sideline. Across the 30 to the 25. Down to the 20. Finally brought down around the 15. There my Basses. I got some wheels. I mean, he got to that edge, you say, okay, he's got 10. Maybe he's going to get knocked down or somebody's going to get him. But he showed he's got a little speed on his side as well right here. And he stretches this out. Finally brought down at the 10-yard line inside the Rogers State College red zone. We're going to say right at the 10, first down and goal. Here's the snap. The handoff to Travis. Bounces outside. Now coming back left. Gets a block and gets a couple of yards. Nice run by Travis to get down to the seven-yard line. It's going to be second down and goal from the seven. And we have an injured red tornado on the field. Well, suddenly these offenses that couldn't do a whole lot the first half have found themselves. And I believe this is, could be Jordan Brown, our kicker as well, who is... Kind of pointing to his right hip, and that's they've had a lot of hip injuries on this Clinton team. They actually have three guys out tonight with hip injuries. One's going to have surgery mm. at some point, either in the season or after the season. Let's take a look whether we can see it. Kind of non. I was flying yeah. by there, I think. I yeah. don't know. Can't see what happened. Let's go downstairs to Ed. Ed, what do you see on that one? Well, Brown actually hurt himself on the kickoff, fellas. He, you know, when he kicked it out of bounds, I was watching him to see his reaction to kicking one not so great, and he was limping. Uh, so he must have hurt his hip on the kickoff, and it just gave loose right here. But he actually hurt it on the kickoff. I hope he's going to be okay. Let's see how he walks he, off. He's a goalkeeper. He's used to. Tough plays like that. He's going to walk off on his own power. Well, the soccer program is really helping out the football program. It's like they have a number of guys that can kick, punt, kick, whatever. I mean, it's. At the conclusion of tonight's game, we will select our GMC player of the game. And a couple of players making headlines so far in the second half, Barker and Bass. Yeah. Nobody's wrapped it up yet, though. Here is the pass to Walker. The traffic there he's throwing in there, but he got there. Inside the Rose State red zone. And that's going to end the third quarter. The Chargers on the drive after giving up the touchdown to the Red Tornadoes. We enter the fourth quarter. We have a great one here at Heritage Hall, 14-7. The Red Tornadoes taking the lead into the fourth quarter. We will be back with the fourth quarter on Friday Night Rivals right after this.
Start of the fourth quarter here at Heritage Hall. Jack Damro, Myron Patton, Ed Murray with you. And here at Heritage Hall on third down and goal. Bass looking for the end zone, and his pass is going to be just short as he was looking for Burton. And it will bring up fourth down and goal for the Chargers. Had to receive a wide open the back of the end zone. He went short. So you throw it up to six foot three Ori Walker. Yeah, well, he's, he's over in the back corner. And he's on Bar. Uh, well, actually, he's not on Barker. Kentavion Hill will guard Walker here to the near side. Fourth down and goal for the Chargers. Bass throwing it up to him, and he is in the end zone, but in and out of the hands of Ori Walker, who wants a penalty but is not going to get pass interference. And the ball will go over on downs. He's begging for it. The official's not buying it. Boy. He's over. The, he's, he's on it. Right. Looks like he's there to take early. But. Yes. So they turn the ball over on downs. So the Red Tornadoes have it at their own five-yard line, leading 14-7 to seven as we now play in the fourth quarter. And here is Soli on the quarterback keeper around the right side. Got a yard out to the seven. Second down and long now for the Red Tornadoes, who you would think might keep it on the ground in this quarter. If you're here to tall, you can keep him pinned deep, you, especially what's the status of your punter. He just walked off. Is he is he punting? Is he not? If he's not punting, they'll have to come with their second string punter, which who knows, maybe he's just as good. They seem to have kickers all over the place on Clinton's <laughs> team. But you stand a good, good field position if you can hold him deep here. Second down play from the seven. Pitch goes to the tailback. Running right, gets a move up across the 10, going to be shy of the first down on the carry. Darren Hester, the freshman running back. It'll bring up third down, and let's call it a long three for the Red Tornadoes. So you can just tell Hester, Barker, they just kind of got that little it to them, little wiggle to them, along with some speed. But there's a big play waiting to happen, even though he's just a freshman. I think he weighs like 143 pounds. Mm -hmm. But he can make a guy miss, get an open field. He can really he can do some damage to a defense. If you look there, Jordan Brown looks like he's getting ready to come back in. So hopefully that hip not bothering him too much. Third down and three. And I want to say that Soli got the first down across yep. the 15 to the 16-yard line. And it's a Brahms first down from our farm to our store. Only Brahms is the more. And now another injured player for the Red Tornadoes on the field. That is one of the linemen. Can't tell really who that is. So while they attend to the injury, let's take a break. The Red Tornadoes with the football and the lead here in the fourth quarter.
Back at Heritage Hall after the injury. First down and 10 for the Red Tornadoes at their 16-yard line. And around 10 minutes left to go in this football game. Cooper Soley with the handoff back up the middle. Still on his feet. He's in that pile somewhere. I can't see him. But. Trey Bennett gets good yardage up to around the 24-yard line. Closed captioning for tonight's game is brought to you by the wonderful group at High Five Media. High Five Media, intentionally different. Hey, Johnston also injured. Charger hopping off the field. Eight of seven, second and three. It'll be second down and three. Here's a handoff again to Trey Bennett. And Bennett's going to get a first down up to the 30-yard line. Another Brahms first down for the uh, Red Tornadoes who started at their own five-yard line. Now they're up to around the 30. Let's go downstairs to Ed Murray, Ed. Yeah, a couple of injury updates for Clinton. Number 54, Bladen Fuller, the offensive lineman. He's in pretty good pain over on the bench, but they're just retaping his right ankle. So maybe he can come back in. And number 84, the tight end, uh, Montrell Crane, also with an ankle injury. He's getting his retape. He just wanted to retape. He'll come back in. All right, thank you, Ed. First down and 10 from the 30. Here is the pitch. Running left across the 30 up to about the 33 is Hester. Keeping the ball on the ground for Clinton with eight and a half to play here in the fourth quarter. Yes, there wasn't a lot there. He just uh, outran in the end and turned what could have been a four or five yard loss and about a three or four yard gain. And you got to give Clinton's offensive line credit. They have, they've simply just moved the pile. There's been not a whole lot of uh, fancy stuff here. It's just they've moved the head of tall front out of the way, and they've now, like I said, got up past the 30-yard line, eating up some clock. Bennett out of the backfield. Now here's the pitch to Rhodes around the right side. Good stiff arm at the 35, up to the 40, and up to the 43-yard line. A Bronx first down for the Red Tornadoes, and they keep the ball and the clock running. Yeah. Makes a guy miss there, stiff on there, picks up positive yards, and like this, stays in bounds, keep that clock rolling. We're under eight minutes to go, and what you were thinking, maybe Harris Hall would get good field position. Now they're in the process of very least flipping the field in their favor. Good run that time by Garrison Rhodes. First down and 10 from the 43. High formation for the Red Tornadoes. And here's the handoff to Bennett. And he's going to get five yards. Yeah. Good run that time. Carries a couple of tacklers with him. We'll bring up second down. May have even gotten six. Now they're going to give him five. Second down and five now for the Red Tornadoes. Under That's good. around seven to play. Yeah, you keep the clock moving. You don't have to throw it. Got two downs, pick up five yards. You're about to move in that territory. Again, if you punt, Harris Hall's going to have the ball deep in our territory with the, long, the entire field to go. We're now just seven minutes to go. Ball officially at the 49-yard line. Here is Soli on the keeper, and he's going to be close to first down, and I believe he got another first down, Brahms first down, to the 47 of Heritage Hall. Yeah, they give it to him. That's first down. It's pretty impressive what they're doing. Don't they, forget this ball started at the five. This drive started at the five-yard line. Yeah, they and they really haven't had this kind of drive where they just kind of just impose their will, running the football, and I mean, have they thrown? I don't think they've thrown it. Just, they have not thrown this it. This whole drive. A dose of uh, Bennett and Rhodes. And Soli. Here's Bennett again. Back up the middle. There's a flag thrown from the back judge. 
probably coming back against Clinton. It's going to be either chop block or a hold. I was about to say first like chop been block. The key, yeah. Chop but. block. Second one of the night against Clinton. And there it is right there. Same, same player as the first half. Yeah. Got Kong Reeves on the chop block. There's nothing like this to kill a drive, a holding, or in this case, a chop block. And first down has been the key. They've gotten such positive yards on first down, set them up with second and five, second and six, things of that nature. Now you're going to lose 15 yards. And... All the way back to the 37. Yeah, you're looking first and 25. You're in a passing situation already. And that's not their strength. Hadn't been, anyway. Jeremiah Barker, the lone wide out to the right side. I formation. Here is the pitch to Rhodes. Running right. Another flag thrown. And Rhodes gets up to about the 41-42. But again, let's see what this penalty is going to be if it's against Clinton. This plays right into the Heritage Hall's favor going backwards, getting good field position if they can stop him on this drive. But again... If you take the penalty, Myron, you're still at first down. Yeah. So the yeah, clock has yeah. run off. If you're Heritage Hall, you might want to decline this penalty, given it's first down and 25, wouldn't yeah. you? Yeah. It's, it's something you definitely think about, yeah. Uh, make them run second, and it's still second about 25. And the referee, Brad Friesian, asking him if they want it, want it declined, and they are going to decline it. Yeah. So Mark Adams, the interim head coach for the Chargers, declines the penalty, so it's – Going to be second down and 25 with the ball, or a little little less than that. Second and 23, 23 at the 40-yard line. Second down, 23 officially. Yeah, you want you want them run it down to get this ball back as soon as possible. You're now past, halfway past this quarter. They've been able to eat up. I believe what they took possession around, what, the 10-minute mark? Just yeah. a little bit more than that, so almost five minutes of possession right here. Here's their first pass. It's lobbed up into the air, caught by Bennett at the 45, on his feet down to the 37-yard line, and a first down for the Red Tornadoes, but there's a flag way back at the line of scrimmage, actually in the backfield. Personal, Personal foul. foul against Heritage Hall. Yeah, must hit the quarterback late or something. Roughing the passer. So not only did they pick up the first down, they also get a personal foul. Let's see if we can see it right here. Late hit after the pass, exactly. Saw it in the back background. So you go from second and 23 to pick up the first down, plus another 15 yards. Now they're threatening to make this a two-score game. And the clock is running with 5.15 to play. The ball is spotted at the 23. So you're right, Myron. Second down and 23. Now the ball's at the 23 of Heritage Hall. Here's the handoff to Bennett. Right back up the middle. Gets about four yards. Second down and six. We're inside the Rose State red zone. One of our... Great sponsors on Friday Night Rivals this year. And again, first down, they get four yards. This, the first down has been the key for them on this drive. Four, five, six yards. Sets you up a second and, and makeable. Two receivers to the near side, and here is the second down play. Actually, Soli's going to, looks like he's changing the play at the line of scrimmage. And he calls his own number and fumbles the football. This is going to be interesting. Now, if you're John Higby, the head coach of Clinton, <laughs> what oh, do you say? Man. You change the call. I was about to say he's losing his hair, but, I mean. <laughs> and it's not like he looked over the sideline to get the new play, right? Yeah. It looked like he changed it on his own. And there's a squirt between his legs there, and he slips. And, and I wonder, Meyer, if the center thought he was in a shotgun formation. <laughs> And it came back stronger than what Cooper thought it might come back at. Maybe. And now it's it's third and a lot. <laughs> what, about 15? 
and now they're going to hold Cooper. The play clock is still at 25, so you saw John Higby kind of motion to him, hey, slow down. Yeah. We have the clock on our side. They're going to let the play clock go all the way down. We're under three and a half to play in the football game. And I think he just wanted them to slow down, but now it looks like they're going to call a timeout. Well, they're going to have to call a timeout yeah. now. So maybe they just wanted to call a timeout to talk about what they wanted to do on third down. At the, the very long. least, you, you wanted to run some clock. You had a lot of time on the play clock. You want to run that play clock all the way down. Now you say it's called timeout. Let's, let's make sure we want to know what we're doing here, what we're running. Don't turn it over, you know. All right, let's take a quick break. We're back after this on Friday Night Rivals. Clinton on top. Welcome back, everyone, to Heritage Hall. The Red Tornadoes with the football at the 27. Big third down and 14 play coming up. Don't forget, coming up after the game, we will choose the dynamite driving drive of the game, and you would think, Myron, that this could be the drive of the game if they can add points to the scoreboard and make it a two-possession game. This drive, don't forget, started at the five-yard line with over 10 minutes to play. And the clock is now reading 3.07. So they've had the football for over seven minutes on this drive. Yeah, and they've done what they want to do. They've just run the ball for the most part. Had the big play to get out of second and 23. But other than that, it's just been running the football here to call. The tailback is Garrison Rhodes. Here's the third down play. They will pitch it to him right side. And he is not going to get the first down. It'll bring up fourth down. And here is a huge call for the Red Tornadoes. A timeout. The Chargers, I believe, call the timeout. And so do the Red Tornadoes kick a field goal or go for it on fourth down. If they were to kick a field goal, let's see where the football is spotted. 43 yarder looks like, 40. about the 26. Yep. Yeah, you would think the they would spot it where around the 35, 36 yard line. So you're looking what, 46 yard field goal? Oh, 26, he's about seven yards back. So you're looking about 30. Up to 33, Three, so 43, yeah, yeah. 30, maybe 34. I mean, 44 yards. About a 43 yard field 43 goal. 43 yard field goal, yeah. How do you feel about your kicker? I mean, he's kicked it long. Is he accurate? I mean. But he is not the field goal kicker. So Sammy Velez has been the field yeah, goal kicker. No wind at all. So, Ed, let's go downstairs to you. What do you see? Well, at the start of the game, there was a pretty good breeze out of the east. There is absolutely no wind out here. All the flags are just hanging down. So, there won't be wind hurting or helping if they try the 43-44 yarder. Or do you have Jordan Brown try the field goal? Although he kicks off and punts, he has not been doing the point after attempts. He sure would have liked to have gotten more yards on that on that third down. Um, there's a chance it could be blocked. And as you know, it's, it's a lot could go wrong on a, on a field goal. But if you're going for it, it's really a chance you picking up fourth and what. 614 or whatever it is. And if you and obviously they're wrong. gonna yeah, it looks like they're gonna go for it. And if you get some yardage and you don't pick up the first down, you're still pinning Heritage Hall pretty deep. That means they gotta drive at least what seven uh, 70, 80 yards possibly for a score and a tie. So here we go, fourth down. Fourth down and 14 for the Red Tornadoes. Ball is at the 27. Low snap. Now, the wide receiver is going to pass it into the end zone. It is caught. Touchdown. 
Are you kidding me? Heritage Hall had two guys back there. They snuck, they, they snuffed it out. They knew what was coming, or they defensed it very well, but he still makes the catch. DeAndre Francher was the one who threw the pass on the end around. Mm. And it was Javion Hill making the catch. What an unbelievable yes. play. And here's the point after by Velez, and it is up and good. And the Red Tornadoes make it a two-possession game, 21-7, to with 2.54 to play. Did you expect that? Uh, well, you know, you, you try reverse, you try a trick play, yes. But like I said, Heritage had two guys back there. They just didn't make play on the ball. Got to make play on the ball and uh, give Clinton a lot of credit for being able to, to make the play. And he will, uh, well, I was about to say he'll sleep well. He may not sleep at all tonight. He may just, uh, he's recording this game. He's going to keep playing it back. <laughs> what a pass by DeAndre Franchier. And it was on target. A lot of times you overthrow it, underthrow it. It was right there. Gave his guy a chance to make a play on the ball, and he did just that. Oh, beautiful pass, wasn't it? Yeah. So they've now taken a two-touchdown lead with just under three minutes to go in the ball game. So this is a pair of Charles got a play they haven't used, a trick play or whatever. This is the time you use it a, on this drive. A 95-yard drive to possibly cap it. Mm -hmm. Because now if you're the Chargers, you have to score quick, onside kick, get it back, score and again. score quick, yes. Yeah, just to tie it. Just to tie it, exactly. And that drive was, was pretty much old school. Let's run the ball. Let's run it, see if they can stop it. They didn't. And here is the ortho central kickoff line drive by Jordan Brown. And he is hurt back at midfield. And here's the return by the Chargers up across the 30. And that leg is really hurting Jordan Brown. That is not a good sign if you're the Red Tornadoes. You really need him. Or is he... Is he just suffering from a cramp? It looks like now it could just be a cramp. And, again, those are extremely painful. But, again, he had been nursing a sore hip earlier in the game, but this does not look like the hip. Ed, I know you're down there and see that probably better than us. Yeah, it does look like a cramp. And the guy who was helping him stretch it out immediately, the dude that just threw the touchdown pass. <laughs> a lot of teamwork out here, but one of the uh, trainers came out here, and it looks like, the typical, you know, pushing on the big toes and towards the body and trying to get that cramp out. But he definitely twisted something on the previous kickoff, one before this one. And he's playing through it, though. He was out there for tackle on that entire drive once they got out of the uh, shadow of the end zone. I think Myron has some uh, mustard and pickle juice for him, Ed. Oh, yeah, so the pickle he, juice. Yeah, I forgot about that. I travel with that all the time, you know. It's, just, <laughs> it's in the car. I can go get it right now, you know. You need to try it, Myron. Next, before next game, you need to just drink some pickle juice and let me know how it goes. Pickle juice on ice, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. Uh, I think I'll pass. Yeah, me too. But in any case, uh, it's, you know, Heritage Hall's in a bit of a pickle themselves. Trying to figure out how to way to get back in this this football game with 2:49 left. And let's not forget that Clinton has not beaten Heritage Hall since 2013. So it's been a long time for the Red Tornadoes. Well, they wanted they wanted to bounce back. They were disappointed in how they played last week against McGinnis. And that guy right there, the head coach, you could tell by his uh, halftime inter interaction with uh, Ed. As he said, we could have 14. Uh, well, they got 21. And so his guys have come out. That drive was really impressive. It, it was really impressive because I think everybody in the, probably expected them to go three and out or maybe they get a first down, but not to go the length of the field. And they scored. Even if they didn't score, just expect they were going to flip the field yeah. and make McGinnis go the, or excuse me, uh, Heritage Hall go the length of the field. I don't think anybody expected them to do that. No, not, not at all. And definitely a great turnaround from last week's loss to McGinnis for the Red Tornadoes. Two turnovers today, but still they're able to battle through that. Here is Heritage Hall now, and a pick. This is going to be a pick six as Cooper Soley returns it for a touchdown. Let's call it back, though. Let's call it, let's go home. 
he read that he was all over that pass. It was um, he jumped the route, as they say, and like it was intended for him. Nothing in front, but grass in the end zone. Yep. So turnovers, yes, they took advantage there. It is a Homeland Grocery touchdown. Homeland Grocery, your homegrown advantage. As the Red Tornadoes take advantage of five Heritage Hall turnovers tonight. So here's the point after by Velez. And it is up and it is good. And I'll tell you what, Myron, there is one thing that Clinton has besides a great football team. They also have two great kickers. And that could really play a factor in 4A down the stretch when you're in the playoffs and, oh, yeah. and a big playoff run. Yeah, I don't know how many games we do where teams can't even kick extra points. They just go for it every time. Sure. You know, where a field, a field goal would win, but they can't do it because they don't have a reliable kicker. Uh, they've got one of the better kicking games I've seen regardless in a long time, of class. yes. In a long time. Yeah. No, no doubt about it. Next week, we will be in Midwest City with the Midwest City Bombers hosting the Putnam City North Panthers. Game time, 7 o'clock next Friday night on the CW34. We'll see Midwest City was taking it on the chin earlier to Dell City in a, another Midwest City inner city matchup. Yeah, Dell State's pretty good. They've got... Um one guy going to Oklahoma State, another guy going to Kansas State. They've got some several D1 prospects, and they were playing like they were up 24-0 last I saw. And it's good to see Dell City back yeah. with some really good football players as they had, what, back in the mid-90s oh, yeah. and yeah. late 90s. You know, Coach Manning was there, and yeah. they were always really good. Of course, Mike Dunn, who's now the Carl Albert coach, that's where he was before yeah. taking Carl Albert last year, this being his second year at the uh, Titans. But... Yeah, it's good to see that program back up and running. Here is Sammy Velez to kick it off, and he kicks it toward the end zone and out of the back of the end zone. So they didn't lose a beat when Justin Brown went out with injury, and Sammy Velez sends it deep, and so the Chargers will take over deep in their own territory with 2.41 to play and now trailing 28-7 to as the Red Tornadoes are going to come in on the road for the second week in a row. Losing last week in Oklahoma City to McGinnis and going to pull out a victory here tonight against the Chargers. The bus ride will be much, much better tonight, though, going back up I-40 West. Coming off a win as opposed to a loss last week. So here are the Chargers, first down and 10 at the 20-yard line. Fast looking to pass, being rushed by Bennett, and is hit as he delivers the football out across the 30-yard line. A first down for Heritage Hall. Mass took quite a hit there, still complete the pass. Rashad Smith, Rashad Smith on the reception. And a Brahms first down. Clock runs under two and a half to play. Bass rolling out right, looking downfield. Has a receiver open at the 40-yard line. Tiptoes his way up around the 42 and finally brought down right there. Harry Shaw really didn't like how that tackle was made, but it is another Brahms first down for the Chargers. He wanted to go ahead and get, on, get out of bounds. Clock continues to run. Bass looking left, throws it long, down the sideline, and almost intercepted by the Red Tornadoes again, in and out of the hands of O'Neill. And it'll bring up second down. The clock stopped with 2.01 to play. Yeah, coming off from a safety position, had it, and then got tripped up. Our scholar athlete of the week. The Red Tornadoes, good piece on him, Myron, as you do always on the Scholar Athletes of the Week. Here is Bass again, steps up, fires it across the middle. It is caught across midfield. And Smith tries to get out of bounds. And the whistle him. is blown. We're going to have to choose our player of the game coming up. And a lot of flags now fly. Uh oh we got hats flying. Hats flying, flags, flags. flying. 
Got to sort this through. Rush getting together. Say, okay, what'd you see? Well, here's what I saw. I oh, he had <laughs> right there. The referee with no hat had two or three penalties himself. I'll tell you what, those refs are pretty big, man. They could break up some stuff. They 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 work <laughs> out just like uh, Big Twelve referees, right? I mean, they want to do some, you know, good bouncer somewhere. Yeah. I, I know some people <laughs> might hire them, you know. <laughs> well, let's see what they are. This is a long talk about, I would think you would possibly have penalties on both sides of the ball. A lot of extracurricular activity after the play was over. Now this is where you, you got a minute 51 left. Flynn's up by three touchdowns. Everybody need to keep the cool. Um, I don't think there's any 21 point comebacks in Less than two minutes. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. But, uh, well, here's Brandon Friesian, I believe, to make the call. Personal foul on Clinton. Unsportsmanlike on Heritage Hall. So we'll have offsetting penalties. And we'll repeat first down. Or well, have first down. Sorry, that was after the play, so Heritage Hall had already picked up the first down. So officially, the ball is spotted at the 46. Clock is stopped. 151 to play. 28-7. The Red Tornadoes with the lead here in the fourth quarter. Bass steps up. Now rolling out left. Another flag is thrown. Another one is thrown. His pass is caught. Across the 30-yard line, still on his feet, down to Fumble. the 20, and he fumbles the football and picked up by the Chargers. But let's see what the flags are back at the line of scrimmage, and it's going to be holding against Heritage Hall. And the final two minutes of this game is taking it's taking long that long last time. drive. A lot of, lot of penalties the last couple of minutes here. Cooper Cookson on the reception. All that yardage is going to be for not. Still going to be first down for the Chargers, but it's going to be a long way. Only penalty is a spot foul. So it's a spot foul. It was back in the backfield. So it occurred what, roughly around what the 45-yard line. So the ball is back at the 35. So long way to go for Heritage Hall. They got to get Clinton 36 for a first down. So you do the math on that, how far that is. It's, it's a long way. It's a long way. <laughs> Bass almost dropped back where he delivered the football, and it's incomplete. And it is now second down for the Chargers. Trey Bennett, I'll tell you what. Trey Bennett, well, I know we got to choose a player of the game, and I know I told our producer 21, Barker, but i tell you what, Trey Bennett's had – a great game as well. Yeah. Scored yeah, yeah. a touchdown. Been everywhere on defense. Has rushed the football several times tonight. Showing it right there. Here is the pass by Bass. And Ori Walker, who fell down, actually got back up. Got and it. made the catch falling out of bounds. What a great catch by Ori Walker. And I think he got both feet down. He like, thinks he's in the NFL or something. And he does stop the clock with a minute 13 to go. He's had a great game tonight as well. Yeah. The defensive end just, just beat the right tackle. 84 Montreal Crane on the sack. Final minute of the game. Twenty-eight seven. The Red Tornadoes are going to come in and get a huge victory here tonight. Defeating the number two team in class 3A, the Heritage Hall Chargers. They will not have to worry about Lincoln Christian in the semifinals of the state playoffs this year. They would meet in the finals if both teams were to get to the finals again. They played, what, the last, what, three years in the semis. So yeah. 
And they're always good Lincoln Christian. Too. That could be the final play of the game. Well, clock has stopped 16 seconds, so we will have one more. Don't forget, coming up, we'll have the, uh, oh, we got the drive of the game now. So our dynamite driving drive of the game, of course, had to be the one where the Red Tornadoes start at their own five-yard line and go 95 yards over about eight minutes. And Myron, that really won the game for him on that big, huge drive. Yeah, because they did something they hadn't done the entire game. They controlled the ball with the running game and really just won the line of scrimmage. Had two pass plays in the entire drive. Wanted to pick up a third and 23, and then the touchdown on fourth down on reverse. Other than that, it was all runs, controlled the line of scrimmage, and that gave him a two-score game, and that ended the game right there. That is a drive of the game, no doubt. And our GMC player of the game, we're going to give it to Jeremiah Barker mm -hmm. for the long pass reception of 67 yards. That what? really, he really performed well tonight. Yeah, and you know, just making plays. And the the, the 67 yarder came after Heritage Hall had tied the game and really had momentum. And you think, okay, they've come out ready to play, and then he snatches it right back. Puts Clinton back on top, 14 to seven, and so it really kind of stemmed the tide. And of course, we just did the drive of the game where they go up by two scores. Yeah, he was a a big part of why they won tonight. One of those guys said, "Just get the ball, and he can make a play for you." Uh, that you need if you're going to be a state championship team, you need players like that to get things done. And I love the concentration on that long touchdown pass reception because he actually bumbled, the, uh, uh, fumbled the football a little bit, kind of bumbled it around a little bit, but still caught it, and then uh, was able to. Uh, score the touchdown that really sparked the Red Tornadoes. Waiting on Ed Murray and our Friday Night Rivals trophy presentation. Ed, I'm not sure if you can hear me or you're ready. You're ready? Go ahead. Take it away. Yeah. C Coach Higby, I don't know if I have to say much because this was a fantastic performance. Clinton showed us what Clinton football is about. Like, we look like Clinton, did we not? I tell you what. They got, they got a little momentum. You hit the big play on the pass. Then your defense stops them inside the five. And then what a drive. Ten minutes to a touchdown. <laughs> it was a old-style Clinton football. Well, guys, I know y'all have a, aspirations of a lot bigger trophy. You got 17 bigger ones. But your offensive line was great, leading the way for number 15 here for the team. Here, how about that? Oh, that's the funnest part of the night, man. I like to let you see that. <laughs> you know, and, and even though they have 17 uh, state championship trophies, Myron, uh, it doesn't get old, does it? <laughs> it's great, man. I love seeing that. These kids go nuts over this trophy. <laughs> oh, it's a lot of fun. You know, and, and so, some of the kids have never lifted a trophy like some of these guys have. So some of the freshmen and, and sophomores uh, who are probably playing for the first time. But what a great program the Clinton Red Tornadoes are and have been over the years. And uh, they are well on their way uh, in Class 4A, I would think, to uh, another uh, state championship run. Possibly. Yeah, yeah, that's this is a good win for them coming off last week's loss. And as uh, the coach said, it was Clinton football, especially that last drive. It's like, we're coming at you. Can you stop it? And here, Charles couldn't stop it on that drive, no doubt. All right, all of us would like to take a moment to thank the wonderful sponsor partners of Friday Night Rivals, Norman Regional Hospital, Ortho Central. GMC, McIntyre Law, and 1-800-GOT-JUNK, who through their contributions to the program make these games possible for you viewers at home. We'd also like to thank our other great sponsor supporters for their contributions to our 2022 Friday Night Rivals telecast. High Five Media, Oklahoma Ford Dealers, Brahms Ice Cream and Dairy Stores, Rose State College, Homeland Grocery, Dynamite Driving, and the United States Coast Guard. And we'd especially like to thank tonight's participating high schools and their administrators for their continued support. Clinton High School and our host, Heritage Hall. Once again, our final score tonight from Heritage Hall, it's the Clinton Red Tornadoes 28 and the Chargers 7. From Iron Patton and Ed Murray, I'm Jack Dambrell. Have a great night. We'll see you next week.